We are live. You are watching the Merged Marketing Podcast. You are listening to the Merged Marketing Podcast. My name is Jason Hunt, and today I'm here with Katie Romagnolo, who is a spiritual business coach. I'm really excited for this episode. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, Katie is a spiritual business coach, best-selling author, and international speaker. She helps entrepreneurs turn their passion project into a full-time sustainable career using the power of the moon. And in this episode, we're learning how to harness the power of the moon to achieve your business goals. Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Definitely. And uh, and I think the first question I want to ask is definitely about your journey to how you went from, well, you still are a real estate broker, but also a spiritual business coach. Tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So journey is the word because it definitely has been this tale of twists and turns. I absolutely never in a million years would have expected that I'd be sitting here as a spiritual business coach today. It wasn't what I set out to do in life. And, you know, I was a real estate broker for, I'm in my 13th year now. So it's been a pretty long standing career, something I really knew who, how to do, but it didn't really call my soul. And I didn't know what that even meant at a certain point in my life. But in my 30s, all of a sudden, I was somebody that had a lot of social anxiety. I was doing well, like financially within my career and was kind of checking the boxes off in terms of what success is supposed to be in quotation marks. But for whatever reason, I was just really, really quite shy, quite reserved and had this social anxiety effect where I would drive home quite honestly in my car after appointments with clients and just cry. And I couldn't figure out like what was going on. Why was I so miserable? And it led me into this path of actually speaking up for the very first time at a real estate brokerage to a coach that was there that was starting to talk about the unconscious mind and how we store so much of the experiences and feelings and thoughts that have happened throughout our lifetime within like our cellular memory, within our body somewhere. And I was like, okay, so maybe I don't know what's going on, why I feel like this, because there's more to it under the surface I haven't tapped into that's gone on in my life. So fast track from there, and I find myself absolutely loving the work that I did with another coach back, this was 2017, where I dealt with my anxiety. So where it came from, where it showed up from, all of the things in my life that had happened that were quite traumatic in my childhood and why that was showing up as social anxiety for me in my work setting, it started to make sense. So loving all of the change that was happening for me, I wasn't telling people that, hey, like I've gone through all this stuff and I had actually gone into practitioner training for uh, NLP practitioner myself just because it was so fascinating. Right. And my career started to really shift. My life started to open up and people started asking me, like, what are you doing? And so I started to talk about it a little bit. And then it was like, okay, well, can you do that with me too? And my coaching company was created kind of by accident through the just the love and the passion of helping people to transition into more within their own career. Now, this is where the twist happens. I was working with a lot of real estate agents, mortgage brokers, and people within my field that I had a lot of connections to. And I was again having this like pull, like there was something that was going on that I wanted more for. And I found myself really diving into spiritual practices. So at first it was really just like meditation and then really learning about the cycles, the you know law of cycles, the different universal cycles that happen and really starting to see all these different synchronicities and like amazing miracles happening in my life. And it's drawn me into really learning about how the moon cycles are very, very much so important to how life works on an emotional sense, a financial sense, our relationships, everything in life works on cycles. And it's been a pretty wild ride to hear, but uh, working with spiritual entrepreneurs now, just like myself, who understand that uh, there's a little bit more to just this world we see on the outside to how life is really fulfilling. Can you pinpoint like the epiphany, like that first moment you like this cycle thing? It's not just woo woo stuff. This is for real. And, and, and I feel it and it's hit me and this has happened. And that's why I feel this way. It's due to that. Can you attribute it to that, to a certain experience? 
Yeah. So, and I love that you said it, it's not just this woo woo stuff because for a long time I was like, okay, this buttoned up serious real estate person who's doing business coaching with people. And it's like, how do we introduce something like this that I know is working in my life? That's not going to just feel like, Whoa, this lady's off her rocker, right? What is she doing? So honestly, the moment came for me in rock bottom. So people didn't know that I was really facing this big thing that was going on in my own personal life where I was trying to sell my own home. And my own home was this beautiful waterfront luxury estate, like something that had been featured on and like literally the front cover of magazines because it was just so stunning. But when I put it up for sale, all of a sudden I couldn't sell the darn thing. And it was like, it didn't matter what price. It didn't matter how many people came through, how much interest there was. It was like this attachment to, I just, I, I can't, this place is not letting me go. And it started to make me spiral after three years. I ended up writing a book about this journey because it was so wild. The things that happened in this home and being, feeling like I was stuck there. So having this moment where it was like, I don't even feel like I'm in control of my own life. I am going through all of this coaching work, having so much success, but I've got this like one big anchor in my life. That's not letting me proceed on to the next thing that I want to do, the next goal that I had for my life and with my husband. And it led me into, I was standing like, this was the moment standing out on the waterfront. It was the pitch black of night. And I'm in the middle of the open field. There's nobody around. And I'm just staring up at the sky and thinking like, why? Why am I stuck here in this moment that I, I can't make decisions that are going to let me move forward in life? What is it? What is it about this moment? And this like ginormous moon is above me, right? And it was like seeing it for the very first time. It was the most beautiful feeling that happened in that moment. I, I felt more supported to say something more is going on. You need to figure this out. You're here still for a reason. And it wasn't that like the moon was talking to me or anything like that, but it was like this presence of understanding and, and sort of, um, I guess like unconditional love in that moment as I, I stood out and peered into the, the sky. And I found a meditation group that was about cycles of the moon and they lined up on about seven days apart, like when it was that the cycles would shift and what each one meant. And it started to open my eyes to the specific things that actually happen around certain cycles in the moon. Okay. So it really eludes me to like the question of, of timing is everything, right? So, um, you know, is this, is this something where you would be like, okay, uh, you know, I'm not even going to try to, you know, act this out but it's almost like this certain thing is happening with the moon in the next quarter and this is where you need to take action you need to take risk on this certain thing how does that how does that whole process work with a client how do you guide them to understanding the power and 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 really grabbing the power of the moon of the moon to their advantage yeah great question okay so this is where it also gets very logical and tangible so how i guide people is through four main steps and i like to call this the four primary phases of the moon is really what we're following here and giving some info on that, but it's the four principles to success. So anything that you're looking to do, you can follow this cycle and it is going to be very, very impactful in anything that you're wanting to do. So the way that we start out is around this new moon phase. And a lot of people have heard of this through mainstream, like the new moon, new beginnings. It's, you know, a time to start fresh. And these cycles happen again about every seven days. The moon is shifting. It's moving around us. And in that moon, new moon phase, it's all about like calling in your vision for what you want. That might be for career, for finances. That might be visualizing the person that you want to be with, the life that you want to have. It's all about feeling, like attaining that feeling of what it's going to be like when you have those things and immersing yourself in that. I like to call this time like playtime. So this week, I'll always guide people. This is not about figuring out how am I going to do the steps to get this big thing that I want that feels unattainable. It's about changing the perspective on the feeling itself and starting there. So once we focus on that, then the moon will shift into the next week into first quarter moon. Can I, can I jump on that for one second? Yeah. So, okay. So in that first, uh, you know, for people to understand those feelings uh, and, and how, how do you get them to, to make that decision or that first action um, that they need to take? What is it? Can you maybe give an example? 
Yeah. Okay. So calling in your vision is like the key line here. And the way that you call in your vision is by it's not action steps. It's not going to be the to-do list. It's we kind of do this backwards to what society or schooling uh, generally tells us to do. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that. It's there's a time and a place for when that part occurs. So this calling in your vision part is all about sort of daydreaming and allowing yourself to sit and really think and get yourself back into that childlike mode of like, what did I want to do growing up? If you can't think of the goal that you want and like chances are you have that thing that you want, right? You've been thinking about it. You know what it is. But even if you don't, you want to call in a new vision for your life. You're feeling stuck. Get into that play mode of like, what did I want to be growing up? I honestly wanted to be a singer. And I thought I was going to be like this grand singer on the big stage my whole life. And sometimes I like to tap back into that energy because I call in a lot of the passion I have for speaking and for training and teaching and doing this coaching work from that passion that I had as a little girl to be on stage. So we pull in the feeling. What does it feel like to be on stage? Like when. And it's hey Katie. Oh, I lost you there for one yeah. sec. All good. All good. Okay. I'm back. Awesome. So it's uh, so we got like that that feeling of uh, those those childhood feelings, maybe in the nostalgia of being on stage and embracing that power of that true love that you once had. Um, I totally get that. I, I I used to have a band and and now I speak and I, I I can totally feel that same sort of energy and that's sort of that void that's being filled now because nobody wants to see a retired rock star on stage anymore. So speaking <laughs> definitely fulfills that void. What's uh, what's number two? Yeah. So then we move into first quarter moon energy. And this is when in the sky, you're seeing about a quarter of that moon. So the key here is the moon is gaining in size in illumination. So take that as your cue to gain momentum in life. This is where we're building. So that second step is all about planting seeds and you're wanting to take action during this specific time. So this is the time to start setting out that plan. What are the steps that you're going to need to do to call in this big vision? The thing that you feel so passionate about, what are some tangible steps that are going to move you in the direction of that thing that you want? Gaining momentum and saying yes. So this is the biggest time where all week long, because this energy is really supporting you to get to the next step of what you need to, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves as human beings or as entrepreneurs and we think, oh my goodness, like down the line, I've got all these things I've got to do to become this thing I want to be when really it's just about saying yes to the first thing that's in front of you. So watch out for opportunities during that second phase, the first quarter moon phase, because sometimes they pop up out of nowhere and you might feel like you're not ready for them, but the energy is supporting you and saying, yes, take that first and next step. Awesome. Cool. And, uh, and when you say first quarter moon, how, how often these happen every three months, these Ooh, little phases? So these happen every week. So every, every week. month. Yeah. So if you think of this as like a month at a time, the moon is going to cycle through all of its phases about in that calendar month. Now there's eight uh, main moon phases, but I focus on the four primary because to have you shift like continually through different things is a little overwhelming for people. And the week apart is your best general uh, rule of thumb. Interesting. Okay, cool. So you don't actually have to wait for, uh, you know, a yearly quarter, an annual quarter, a fiscal quarter to do these changes. It's actually yeah. on a weekly. That is cool. Okay, cool. What about number three? So number three is this beautiful full moon phase. So a lot of people don't realize we get a gorgeous full moon every month. And it's this energy that comes in of like being in full illumination. So some people are more familiar with a full moon because it's like, okay, the crazies come out around a full moon. There's this, you know, myth about people really just like becoming the werewolf and like the craziness coming out, but it comes from somewhere. So there's some truth to this in the sense that what happens at full moon phase is all of your emotions. So everything that you've been working on, whether you realize you're working towards things or not in life, everything is always changing. And as things change and life moves forward, chances are there's probably emotions or challenges or things that have come up along the way to deal with. This is the time where things tend to like come to a head. So if you're saying yes to opportunities and you've got this big thing you're passionate about, 
well, life is still life. And you may have all of a sudden that bill is due. And, you know, I kind of need to hustle today to figure out how to get that done. And little things come up. This is the time to deal with any of the emotions that bubble up to the surface. And it's a real thing that even like ER, emergency rooms, they will extra staff and plan accordingly for full moons because like it's just like something's in the air, right? It, it, it's because of the emotions bubbling up that is something to identify, to deal with head on and to learn the lessons from what those feelings are actually coming from. Uh, my firstborn was born during a full moon. And, and that's what they're saying at the hospital that night as well. And what I heard was it's not necessarily the full moon. Yes, it could be the full moon. But actually, if you look at nine months prior to that, it would have been a full moon when the baby was conceived in the first place, right? Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. Now, now when you say, you know, taking care of these emotions and things that bottle up, um, what is the importance of doing them during a full moon? Like, what is it? Like, what is it about that that makes it so important to take care of those tasks at that time? Yeah. So because we're working at things in sequences, right? When you think about everything being a cycle in life, we grow up, we get to a certain phase, and then there's something next that we're sort of intending to do as we move forward. And as that happens, those emotions that come up are in that particular time because they're connected to the thing you're working on. So let's give an example of, okay, so maybe I'm trying to be a speaker. I've got these speaker goals. I know that I have tapped into that passion of being a young girl wanting to be a singer on stage. Now, I've taken some action and I am speaking on a podcast, right? Let's do this in real time, in real life. And as that happens, maybe I'm feeling nervous, right? Public speaking, again, it's a big thing that everybody seems to have this little nervous thing about. Well, that's a feeling that is coming up for a reason. It can either hinder me saying yes to the next thing, or it can be something to address to say, okay, well, what are you nervous about? Right. Is there something behind that that said, OK, you had an experience maybe that didn't go well? Are you running a disaster film in your head about all of the things that could go wrong when really it's a beautiful experience? So learning why something is coming up. And I think a lot of the times our biggest challenges, we're so busy to really just sit with ourselves for a moment and ask, like, why am I feeling this way? What emotion am I actually feeling? Because sometimes emotions, they disguise other things that are really going on. And we tend to then offload that, you know, stressor onto the people who are closest to us by being snappy or, mm -hmm. you know, having a blow up or feeling a little angry at your kids today or irritated at them because they're taking too long to put their shoes on, right? And every day. Is every day yeah. a full moon or what? Like, what's <laughs> up with that? Well, hey, you've got full moon kids. So, right? Right, <laughs> like right. <laughs> Valid point. Awesome. Um, Katie, what about number four? Yeah. So number four is where we kind of get to do like an adjustment or correction to things that have gone on. This here is our third quarter moon phase. So this is where the moon starts to actually decrease back into the dark. So a full moon, as we have like this bright, bright illumination, as it starts to shift in that cycle, it starts losing some of the glow that we see in the sky. So this is the indicator to say we've hit our, our tipping point to now start to get into more of like a rest mode. So you can't just be go, go, go all of the time. It can't be all about action. It can't be all about doing the things each day. We're going to burn out. And this is where like the natural law of cycles allows for you to really have this rest period during this short time. And it's not about like dropping off the map and nothing's going on and you're, you know, not answering your phone or anything like that. But it's about looking at, okay, like where I am right now, what I've accomplished either like to date in my life or during this cycle, is it working for me? What's not working for me? And sitting with the you know, awareness to say, like, is my life what I want it to be? Or do I need to make some adjustments? Now, the beautiful thing about doing this on like a monthly basis is that you give yourself permission to change and to grow and to really identify with who you want to be each and every month as kind of like your own ritual for self care. So to, to recap, going to number one, um, talking about the new moon phase, this is a great time to start fresh and uh, observe the fact that it's a time to start fresh and take and, and then number two, first quarter moon energy. Um, that's when you're actually taking that action um, yes. towards that goal, whatever it is. And then full moon phase is when you're doing your due diligence, taking care of tasks that just need to be taken care of. So your cup doesn't overflow and you get stressed out. 
And then uh, number four is kind of reflection, right? Looking back. And and did I did it hit all those on the head if I were to sum them up? Yeah, definitely. And just in that full moon phase too, like because things are really like coming to a head, all the work that you're working on and what's um, happening and unfolding in life, that's where, you know, those overwhelming emotions may come up. And that's just mm -hmm. about identifying how do I feel and what do I need to move through? Do I need to ask somebody for help? Like what are my solutions to how I'm feeling? Um, does Is there any overlap between what we're talking about today, the power of the moon and, and astrology? certain signs and, and and maybe certain times of the certain times of the year you might want to connect with people from certain signs like if your business partner is a certain sign like my business partner is a leo i'm a libra so um works really well together uh i find naturally if you go by yeah. astrology um but is it even with your partner is, is there certain ways that you approach this when you when speaking of astrology and the people you're connecting with yeah, definitely. So great question, because what also happens in each moon phase, if you want to get like really into this the next level, is that we will have that particular moon present in a certain sign. So for example, you may have a new moon that presents in Libra. Now I'm a Libra as well. So this is really cool. We've got like this scale of balance happening back and forth in our conversation here. Right. That's <laughs> right. Funny. And so let's give that example of new moon energy presenting in Libra. What that would do for you is you would look at the um, attributes of Libra. Like what are the pros and cons? So Libras come in with this kind of balanced energy. We like to be more of a mediator rather than an instigator, right? We can find the positive in anything. Well, if that energy is presenting like that and we know it's in connection with new beginnings, it's all about that energy supporting you coming into what you want by having a balanced approach, right? By looking at it from both sides. So you can pull the attributes out of it and really use that to harness what you're looking to do. Now, when it comes to having like other signs that are around you, the business partner, for example, right, you might have somebody that comes in with a completely opposite sign than you, and you know that the moon is in that particular energy. Well, you can know that the influence of that energy is there and influence that other person by leaning into the opposite of what that sign attracts. So it gets a little bit more complicated. This is mm -hmm. where I like really like to get in depth with people individually as we move through cycles and coaching work for their particular business, but most definitely the signs influence what's showing up. It's interesting. My wife is a Libra as well. And, uh, and it's interesting to just understand or try to have that realization that something's kind of off here, what's going on, but you wouldn't think to point to the moon as the reason as to why things might be off or why things might be on, you know what I mean? And things are, are working really well. I mean, one of the problems is obviously with Libras is indecisiveness, right? <laughs> it's always, yeah. it's always the issue, but really uh, you say indecisiveness, but really I look at it as like, um, I'm just pretty easygoing. You know what I mean? And I'm good with what you want, you know, but sometimes the biggest argument is what we're going to eat for dinner. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. you just don't know or the direction that you want to take something. But um, you're totally. right. I love the point that you bring up with us being Libras and just the, the way the conversation's going. It is very, it's flowing very well, I find. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just the back and forth. It's good. Um, but, you know, this is a, a good segue because I'm sure some of the audience may be wondering some of the tools that they can use to kind of keep track of this and where the moon may be at a certain or given day. Yes. Okay. So this is where I have a wonderful resource that is absolutely free that is really tailored to you. So if you go to my website, which is moonmagic.info, there is a free moon calendar that is updated every single month for you to download. And what the moon calendar does is it provides you specifically on each month, what day you're going to be in what energy. And then it is also going to give you a prompt to say, like, what is a mantra for me to focus on? And I give some guidance on, like, how to use a mantra, uh, what is a mantra, why is it important to do, when to do these mantras, and give some guidance on really, like, what do I do with this energy? So it's probably your first step into creating more magic in your own life, understanding energy and feeling that flow in your business and life and grabbing that free moon calendar. Awesome. And that is moonmagic.info. If you want to go and check that out. Um, Katie, this has been great. Uh, if our audience has any questions for you or ways they can get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? 
Yeah, I love social media. So just find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, uh, first and last name, and look at how my last name is spelled because you will never accidentally type it in right. Nor and will you ever pronounce it right on the first try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's cool because everybody's in the same boat when it comes to that. Find me on Facebook or Instagram, my first and last name. And uh, you can reach out to me through the contact button on my website as well, moonmagic.info. Awesome. Uh, Katie, this has been great. And uh, we let end every show with the same question. And that question is, if you can choose one person dead or alive to represent your brand, who would it be and why? Ooh, okay. I've got to say Albert Einstein. Ooh, Einstein. This is the yes. first time Einstein's been mentioned on this question. Why Albert Einstein? Okay, so I'm fascinated with Einstein's brain. I really think, like everybody knows he was ahead of his time, right? But I think he was ahead of the time of the time. And and mm. here's the secret. As a little girl, I really believed that time travel existed. And I think Einstein knew that too. <laughs> so I think we're one and the same in a lot of ways. I really appreciate his work. Interesting. You sticking by that? You, you believe time travel does exist? It's coming. Some, something's got to give. I can't feel like I know that for no reason at all. So There's something mm -hmm. to time travel. Maybe we got to bring you back for another episode to talk about time travel. <laughs> oh, there's so much. <laughs> awesome. Katie, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. There you go. Katie Roman Yolo. Um, that was an awesome episode. Definitely some things to take away in terms of, uh, you know, maybe, maybe even giving a lot of thought to business owners on what times or to take a risk or what times to make a decision or have a challenging conversation with a business partner or a client. Um, just being cognizant of the placement of the moon could be super helpful and help you be guided uh, to better manage those conversations. You guys know how to reach Katie, uh, reach out to her. And for those watching and listening to the Merge Marketing Podcast, make sure you go on over and subscribe on your go-to podcast channel and uh, give us a five-star review. That would be awesome. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. Don't settle for good. Be great. We'll see you soon.